Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm Angela Brennan and today I bring you again some watercoloring with some amazing detail red rubber cling stamps from the Spellbinders House Mouse Designs. These stamps are so detailed that I seem to always go for watercoloring either with my pro brush markers or just watercolors. And today what I do is I use this amazing stamps and because they're also red rubber cling stamps, they stamp so clearly and the detailed stamps make it so easy to color them. I do a really light wash with watercolor on watercolor paper and then I add, do some loose watercoloring on these stamps. Not much effort is required, I think, because the stamps are so detailed. So it just makes your image look really, really attractive without much effort. That's what I think. I hope you like what I've created here. I use my Magello Mission Gold watercolor palette set for this watercoloring. I've had this for a little while and I'm, I realize I don't use it as often. So while doing some tidying up in my craft room, I find stuff that I haven't used in a long time. And that's how I end up using that for this set. If you really see how I've colored them, it's not hard to do. I color the background, very light, light wash of watercolor, and I let it dry, air dry. And then I add some additional color to it. And I do finish it with some color pencils. Here I have some Canson XL watercolor paper, which I've cut down to a base cut size. And I always have all my watercolors swatched out so it's easy for me to see what the colors look like. I use a flat brush from All to New and I use a spray to activate all the pigments of the watercolor. I also put some water onto the watercolor paper so the color is a little bit more diluted. Because this is a background, I want it to be really light so that when I stamp my image and add a little bit more intense pigment, the image will stand out. So I quickly create six backgrounds with a light wash of the watercolor, put it aside to air dry, and then I start doing some stamping. Now that I've completed all the backgrounds and they're air dried, it's just a matter of choosing which background goes with which stamp. I use a misty because the surface of the watercolor paper is not smooth. It sometimes requires a couple of stamps for the image to be transferred clearly and accurately. So because the stamps are detailed and the paper is not exactly smooth, so a couple of times stamping does the trick. Also, because they're cling stamps, I have removed the foam pad in the Misty to add the stamp in so you get the right depth. I use VersaFine Claire Nocturne ink pad for this stamping because I think the image transfers beautifully with this and it's also something that's easy to do some heat embossing. So I stamp it with the pigment ink from VersaFine Claire and then I sprinkle some super fine clear embossing powder and the ink is locked in so it's not going to bleed when I do some water coloring over it. I really hope you enjoy the video. If you do, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell 
so you're alerted when a new video is uploaded. I'm going to leave you with some music now and I'll catch you later. After stamping all the images with VersaFine Clair Nocturne ink and heat embossing it with clear embossing powder, I start doing some loose watercolour painting on the images. The thing about watercolours is it's best to just layer them. So I start with quite a diluted colour and then when I can see the background colour, I let it dry and start layering it with colour and then you can pretty much cover the background color and get the images to pop out and that's kind of what I do with the ruler here. I put a few layers of that purpley magenta color and I create quite um, a strong colored ruler there. And that's what I do with all the images by layering the watercolor and watercolor dries quite fast. So by the time you do one side of the image you can go back and layer some additional color on the other side. So it's best to let the layers dry in between and add your color on top of it. It's easy enough to do. As I said, the images are quite detailed, so your water coloring just adds a little bit of color to get the image to pop. So you don't have to be too detailed. You've got to kind of keep to the, within the lines, and it's easier to do that because you've already embossed the image, so there's a little bit of a well, so your, your water color doesn't seep out easily, so it's kind of contained and easier to color within the lines.
I add fun foam at the back of each of the watercolor panels so it gives it some depth as well as sturdiness because some of the watercolor panels do curve or warp ever so slightly and I like to straighten it with some fun foam. And I like to take my ink pad direct to paper or direct to card to create a bit of a border. And I think the Catherine Pula ink pads are nice and juicy to do that. When I buy Catherine Pula ink pads, I always buy the re-inkers as well because I do use it to color a card for borders or as well just to color card when I do some of my Kendra card challenges. And I think it's ideal for that. So I do do a lot of borders with taking the ink pad direct to paper. And I have a swatch here and then I can see which colors really suit. So I do it for quite a few of the uh, cards that I can assemble here. I really hope you've enjoyed the video and found some tips and seen how easy it is to do some watercoloring with quite detailed ink stamps. And I think you just stick to loose watercoloring, especially if you're new to watercoloring as I am. I, you know, watercoloring intimidated me for quite a bit and I'm trying to do it more. I think, you know, as they say, practice makes it perfect. So I'm doing more of it. And I find this technique, this style of loose watercoloring suits me and I'm going to continue doing that. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up and do consider subscribing. And when you do subscribe, remember to press that notification bell so you're alerted when a new video is uploaded. In the meantime, happy crafting and I'll catch you at my next video. Take care.